Okay, so hello and welcome to everyone joining us for today's webinar. My name's Laura Dean. I studied at Brighton in the UK and have been working at Eltoma for just under two years now. So we're currently at the Limassol office in Cyprus today. And I'd like to draw your attention to the chat box on screen. So if something is unclear or you would like further clarification on anything mentioned today, please feel free to submit your questions and I'll be happy to elaborate in the form of a Q&A section at the end, time permitting, and I will reply to any unanswered questions via email. Okay, so we'll discuss briefly about the details of the Panama Papers and the resulting, um, so the result on offshore companies, Masak Fonseca, the Panamian law firm, um, how everyone reacted, the consequences and further implications to the offshore world. And um, we'll talk you through some tax planning steps as well in new contexts. Okay, so what happened? So on the evening of April the 3rd, um, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and dozens of media outlets worldwide began publishing a series of documents regarding offshore companies held in the names of many famous people, including politicians, athletes, and musicians. Um, so there are uh, there were 12 links to current or former heads of state and government in the data, including dictators accused of exploiting their own country's policies. More than 60 relatives and associates of heads of state and other politicians were also implicated. The files revealed a suspected billion dollar money laundering ring involving close associates of Russia's President Vladimir Putin. Also mentioned is the brother-in-law of China's president, Xi Jinping, Ukraine president, Petro Poroshenko, and as well the late father of UK Prime Minister David Cameron, as well as three out of the four children of Pakistan's Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif. So um, this is the volume of the data that was leaked compared to previous leaks. This represents uh, the sheer scale of information that has been released. Uh, so publications include research into uh, related offshore companies, as well as comprehensive analysis conducted on these companies. So in the months that followed, the number of documents continued to grow far beyond the original leak, and ultimately a German newspaper acquired 2.6 terabytes of data from the Fanama-based law firm, um, which specializes in company registration in classic offshore jurisdictions such as Panama, BVI, and others. So it's the biggest leak of its kind in the history of information, and there are currently only 200 submissions from 11,000 published. So there's still much more to be investigated. Um, and since the, this event, it has great significance both in a broad sense and could as well potentially change the entire system of modern tax planning as we know it. Okay, so we'll look now at um, the term offshore. So offshore is when something is located or based outside of one's national boundaries. So uh, the term offshore is used to describe foreign banks, corporations, investments, and deposits as well. And a company may legitimately move offshore um, for the purpose of tax avoidance or related, um, you know, relaxed regulations or legislation. So all companies, that are foreign companies, can be divided conditionally on the level of tax applied and can be divided into three categories. So um, countries with normal and high taxes, these include Russia, um, the US, the UK and Ukraine, 
Uh, low tax jurisdictions include Singapore, Cyprus, Estonia, or Hong Kong. And tax free jurisdictions, um, also known as tax havens, such as Panama, Belize, Seychelles, the British Virgin Islands, and others. Um, so in case the archive appears above all companies from offshore jurisdictions, the vast majority of which are registered in Panama and BVI, um, in most countries of the world, company registration in any foreign company is, of course, permitted for the purposes of expansion and growth. And um, obviously, uh, the implications of the leak um, Obviously, the, the biggest implication is for the what is considered to be tax havens, but in low tax and normal tax jurisdictions, we may also see a follow on um, resulting from this. Okay, so it's important to differentiate between what constitutes tax evasion and what constitutes tax avoidance. Um, so, as mentioned previously, uh, offshore company incorporation is a legitimate activity for the most part. However, when considering tax havens and questioning the legality of such activities, um, these two concepts come into play. The terms are very often confused and um, with some people even considering them to be synonymous, but um, it's, yeah. As per legal definitions, uh, one is legal, uh, one is seen to be within the law, and one is seen to be without, um, outside of the law. Uh, tax avoidance is the term denoting legal tax obligations, and while may be frowned upon, it's perfectly legitimate, and all citizens have the right to reduce the amount of tax they pay, as long as it's obviously by legal means, compared to tax evasion, which is uh, including legally prohibited acts, which are aimed at purposefully evading tax entirely. Uh, so we'll look at a scenario now. So um, we'll look at tax avoidance, uh, a legal method. So for instance, um, a Cyprus resident using a Singapore company with a bank account in Latvia, uh, this bank account acts as a buffer f f between the supplier in um, China and the buyer. So um, Singapore, the company in Singapore, buys Chinese equipment um, and modifies it and sells it at an increased price in Cyprus due to um, the use of the territorial taxation principle. And this is uh, preserved in Singapore's legislation. So the company will not have to, will not have any tax liabilities in Singapore um, as long as the company from Cyprus pays an amount that it would be liable to pay in Cyprus to Singapore. So it effectively uses um, Cyprus's reduced tax rate even though it's located in Singapore, which is technically um, a high tax jurisdiction. So this operation is completely legal um, and an example of how effective tax planning can reduce uh, liability. Okay, so we'll look at um, tax evasion and how it can be um, illegally used. So for this example, we will use a UK registered company. Um, so for instance, if this company enters into a contract for consulting services from another company, we'll, we will call it um, Company B. Um, so this company is registered in BVI, the British Virgin Islands, with the owner being the majority shareholder of the company and um, with a contract of, we'll say, just uh, one million pounds. And as a result, the money was transferred uh, with no services being provided as Company B had not paid anything in taxes because the withholding tax rate on a British Virgin Island company is currently 
So therefore, the UK company reduces its taxable base by £1 million, which it's obviously impossible to do such business legitimately and um, within the law that's upheld in the UK. Okay, so we'll look at uh, the negative connotations usually associated uh, with offshore. Um, so usually, no, uh, it's not it's not bad. So using overseas companies are a popular and legitimate tool for the optimization of taxation, uh, property ownership, or um, other securities um, until the offshore company is being used for um, illegitimate purposes. So um, due to high secrecy laws, very often offshore companies become involved in much less legitimate actions such as um, public corruption, uh, money laundering in the proceeds of a crime, and that's obviously terrorist um, financing and so on. So. When a company is used for such purposes frequently, that's when um, offshore typically does uh, get a bad name. However, um, in today's society, companies that use everything from states and intergovernmental organizations uh, to banks and service providers abroad. So the inconsistency here is that the Panama Papers uh, revealed that at the moment the global fight against tax evasion and all the work being carried out by non-profit organizations such as um, the OECD have proved to um, possibly not be such a success at the moment. Um, so that is the company that is willing to cover up corruption also willing to hide and assist terrorists? So we ask that question. Um, okay, sorry, somebody's just said they can't hear me very well. Um, I don't know, is that, um, is that better? Can you hear me? hear me now? I'll try to I'll try to speak up. Um, so, yeah, we ask this question: Is offshore really, you know, looking to aid and um, assist uh, terrorists? Obviously, um, the company that is springs to mind first is um, Sack Fonseca. So it's worth noting that according to the official press release published on um, uh, Masak Fonseca's website, that the company is not engaged and never has engaged in um, the provision of services in, regarding tax planning. So um, the firm, I mean, we won't really discuss the historical background, um, but it's yeah, so it's one of the most famous service providers in the world, um, and they have previously attracted um, attention of law enforcement before. Um, however, there was no formal investigation of the company. So in 2014, um, the United States are interested in the um, were also interested in Masak Fonseca. So they um, actually fined a company in the British Virgin Islands for concealing information about the um, beneficiary company. Um, and most recently, again, at the start of this year, um, they were also accused of money laundering um, regarding the assistance of the Brazilian oil company. Um, which searched for former president of Brazil. And it's worth noting that everywhere, uh, in addition to BVI, um, Masak Fonseca actually, um, I mean, there was no uh, legal obligations because of it. They were found to have um, no wrongdoing. Um, but this, of course, obviously was on a much smaller scale. So 
whether they will um, whether they will have the same outcome, it's yet to be seen, really. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it has essentially helped famous clients uh, evade taxes and other unlawful acts. Um, however, you know, they can be said to not be any different to any other service provider, um, but we will look uh, more at this in just a few slides. So how has the world reacted to the leak? Uh, there's been a huge amount of celebrities and figureheads incriminated for um, conflict of interest, and uh, people have noted the apparent hypocrisy that has taken place, um, including French satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo. Um, they're known for their controversial stance on political events and global outcry. Um, so they released a photo mocking those involved with the scandal. Um, the image shows uh, wealthy, corrupt individuals um, possibly standing by their involvement in Panama, as they did, um, you know, with Paris and the um, Charlie Hebdo attacks. Um, and this was published as um, French authorities seem to be leading the incentive to urge countries to re-add Panama um, to the list of blacklisted tax havens again. It was um, blacklisted previously, but after reviewing the procedures, um, it has been removed. So one of the companies um, named in the leak was Blairmore. This was a trust set up by David Cameron's um, late father, where the prime minister is named as um, director, one of the directors of the company. Um, until now, Mr. Cameron has um, refused any financial involvement in the trust. However, um, this week he revealed for the first time that um, he and his wife sold shares worth more than £30,000 in Blemel um, using an obscure financial instrument known as bearer shares. They're usually used to um, protect um, investors' privacy. So bearer shares don't carry um, the name of the owner. Um, it's similar to banknotes in that they uh, belong to the person um, holding the certificate in their hand, basically. So he insisted um, that everything was just fundamental misconception, that it was set up to avoid tax, um, and saying that his father was being unfairly written about. And although legal, bearer shares have been abolished in many countries because they've been used by, um, you know, for criminal purposes, tax evaders, uh, money laundering, etc. Um, so there's no suggestion that Blairmore was using them for any illegal purpose. Um, and they were common among offshore funds at the time that it was incorporated. Um, so, you know, it's up to you whether you, uh, how you want to, to view it. Uh, critics point to Cameron's apparent double standards here, given he refers to tax avoidance as a moral issue, and at the 2013 G8 summit stated, um, you have to collect the taxes that are owed, that it's only fair for both companies and people who play by the rules. Um, that same year, he also lobbied the European Commission to exclude offshore trusts from being included in an EU-wide crackdown on tax dodging financial instruments, arguing that companies were the real issue and that trusts should not be subject to the same rules. Okay, so uh, we'll look at Sigmund uh, Gunnlefsen now. Um, there's also uh, people saying that this is quite um, hypocritical as well. In um, just this month, um, a few weeks before the uh, before the leak, a Swedish television station um, regarding how 
um, or interviewed Mr. Gunlufsen regarding how Iceland recovered after its financial crisis in 2006. And um, during the interview, he was quoted as saying, it's very important for everyone to pay the fair share into society and that paying less than one share constitutes cheating the society. And when asked if he had any connections to a foreign company, he said his financial assets had always been reported transparently. Um, when asked about his own connections to Wintris, that's um, a foreign company that was a creditor to failed Icelandic banks, he said he had disclosed all requested information to the government and was unsure how the transactions actually worked. So um, following the interview, um, he and his wife issued public statements about um, journalism encroachment on their private lives and insisted on the completeness of their legal disclosures. However, following the release of the papers, it was indicated that Mr. Gunnlifson's wife had bought Wintress. Um, so this was back in 2007 in order to invest her family's money. Um, she bought it from a Panamian company using a Luxembourgian bank account. Um, Mr. Sung, uh, Mr. Gunlifson did not disclose his 50% share of Wintress when he entered Parliament in 2009, and eight months later he sold his share to his wife for only one US dollar. Um, and as well, in 2005, he entered into an agreement with creditors of failed Icelandic banks, including his own wife. And because of this, in Iceland, um, thousands of rallied called for his resignation. And on the 5th of March, he, of course, uh, resigned. So... Russian President Vladimir Putin described the Panama Papers as a U.S. plot to destabilize his country and others. However, um, it's actually numerous U.K. territories that are at the heart of the affair. Um, the leak affected more than 20 countries, um, and this, according to journalists, is only a small part of the investigation and the documentation, as We've said previously, and generally the reaction is um, the same in many countries. Uh, political leaders have either refused to comment or refute the results of the investigation, um, in some cases even stating that the personal savings of individual citizens is their own business. So at the same time, um, law enforcement agencies in almost all jurisdictions have reportedly asked for a copy of the documentation in order to conduct investigations into their citizens' involvement. Okay, so we'll look um, at um, a sec for a second again. Um, so, I mean, the company, it's well established with offices all over the world. Uh, typically, it sells shell firms in cities uh, such as uh, Zurich, um, London or Hong Kong, and in some cases at exceptionally low prices. Uh, clients can buy an enormous company for as little as a thousand US dollars and for an extra fee, a sham director is provided, and if desired, the company's true shareholders can also be concealed. Um, the result is an offshore company whose true purpose and ownership structure is indecipherable from the outside. And um, Zach Fonseca has founded, sold, and managed thousands of these sorts of companies. Uh, so, only a few hours after the leak started to unfold, Masak Fonseca issued a statement um, substanti substantiating its position on the emerged documents. The official press release is now um, on a separate site, however, um, a brief summary is as follows. Uh, they stated that we duly fulfill all the required duties and conduct in accordance with KYC procedures, which establishes the identities of true beneficial owners and supplies information to the regulators and authorities upon request. Um, they said we are 
a business providing services relating to uh, the registration and maintenance of companies, trusts and similar services. We do not provide consulting support of um, companies um, or clients and do not advise how to save money by legitimate means or otherwise. So ultimately, they wanted to disclose that they knew nothing about any wrongdoings. Um, the press release provides an analysis of multiple case studies, proving that they did not know the ultimate beneficiary, um, despite stating that um, that was in their KYC procedures, um, and had no connection with people and organizations mentioned, and were wholly unaware of cash flow accounts. Um, this is due to that kind of information not being a part of um, KYC procedures or CDD, uh, customer due diligence. So um, it really brings light to what needs to be reported on and what doesn't when um, dealing with that sort of information. So the press called the incident the largest leak of such information in the history of the offshore world. Um, however, it's not really a leak in terms of volume of information. It's uh, more of a waterfall bursting at the seams um, in terms of media frenzy. And the reason why it was such a serious issue is not down to the scope or number of the documents, rather the people who were um, who were named. Um, so among the documentation revealed was mail correspondence, uh, scanned documents with signatures of figureheads and celebrities, backdating to 1978 when um, the scanning of documents is probably not common practice. Um, I doubt that in 1978, um, small firms and Fonseca um, scanners, um, you know, probably didn't keep uh, scanning documents and keeping such a backlog of them. Um, so, I mean, they would like readers to believe that um, the, this was a result of an email hack. Um, the company informed its customers, suggesting not all of them had been compromised, that its email server had been compromised, um, stating, um, we rule out an inside job. Uh, this is not a leak. This is a hack. That was uh, one of the founders of Masak Fonseca. However, there are good reasons to doubt that uh, this was a mere email server hack. While Mossack Fonseca's emails appear not to have been encrypted, there is far more to the leak than the emails suggest. It includes scanned passports and some database excerpts, suggesting that however the files were obtained, um, it went beyond what was obtained via email. Um, so, moreover, multiple outlets have identified outdated code and other configuration problems in Masak Fonseca's public website. So, it seems probable that the firm's large volumes of customer data had been exposed um, far more than they would like to admit. Okay, so um, ultimately the consequences of the leak can be divided into two classifications, um, effect on the mind and uh, the level of the effect as well. So currently we can easily see um, what is going on at a micro level and um, perhaps predict the effects on an international macro level. So far, only 1% of the estimated information available to journalists has been published. And at the moment, we can only really observe the effects at a macro level. So among such events, um, we can highlight the creation of special public commissions in Europe, which have also been implemented um, outside of Europe in Ecuador and Panama. So um, micro level events have not yet occurred um, and, the, and will not be a result of journalist research, but uh, we should look more to what um, actions the um, 
special commission will take. Um, the prosecutor's office and other authorities have since promised to investigate um, residents of their own countries individually. So using Cyprus as an example, uh, Cyprus legislation regarding control foreign companies states that if information were to be transmitted to tax authorities, um, those that are using companies for illegitimate purposes in Cyprus may receive fines for failure to correctly report their control of a foreign company. Um, <clears throat> even if it was not for the leak, sooner or later, it is predicted that um, Cyprus tax authorities will still learn about such activities. Um, however, now they will be under more scrutiny than ever. Uh, so as well, bearing in mind the already occurring consequences at the micro level, perhaps there will be increasingly tougher compliance by banks across all jurisdictions, um, Hong Kong, Russia, Singapore, and even Latvia have already informally tightened their requirements. Um, however, this will primarily concern um, larger companies that are, were already under scrutiny anyway, such as um, HSBC. So let's look at the consequences by type now. Um, the first tier politically. Um, so in the case of um, macro events, when considering the classification level, it's only the consequences with which we are currently facing, as we discussed. Um, the politicians that have been involved um, and as a result have stepped down. We could also see calls for uh, shotgun elections and as a result, uh, changes in political parties. Um, this is obviously at the extreme end of things. Um, this is probably what Iceland is facing currently as well. And even the creation of the separate state special commissions. So each um, commission will apply for uh, resident information. Um, this is also a political consequence. Okay, so tax. Um, tech can be viewed at from micro and macro level. At the micro level, there are possibilities that um, additional invoicing and taxing of private individuals and corporations may, t uh, may take place. Considering um, macro level is much more interesting, um, but we can look at this a little bit later on. And information. Um, so, firstly, many companies now dealing with confidential information actively protect their data, limiting the distribution of powers and policy access between employees and, secondly, um, the general attitude to the information. Um, people are now starting to realize that in order to unveil information to the public, uh, there is no need to go through lots of documentation at embassies. Um, you can merely set up some software and uh, get in touch with media to, to create a frenzy. So um, how can we um, change the world of offshore companies by advanced tax planning? Um, can we say uh, that offshore will now slowly come to a close. Um, so uh, we should start with what is relevant to offshore companies in uh, recent years. It's steadily worsened throughout the world and um, the Panama Papers only aggravated the situation and have increased public discussion and interest. Um, all we know about the activities of the OECD and individual countries to combat offshore are now likely to put increasing pressure on um, these jurisdictions um, and will make concessions, of course. Um, so the most important step, which requires offshore companies, um, the creation of a registry of beneficiaries and the transfer of information upon request. 
So the first steps towards this were taken long before the Panama Papers scandal. Um, for example, BVI have um, entered into the beneficiary registry on state level. So that means that all the beneficial owners of every company is um, public information. So this, of course, does not mean um, the end for offshore tax planning. However, it may greatly complicate um, anyone, you know, uh, wanting to carry out corrupt activities or use offshore companies for illegal activities. So the British Overseas Territories and Dependencies have really come under scrutiny from a standpoint of why businesses are choosing to incorporate there. Although these countries are largely self-governing, i.e. they have their own uh, constitution, absolute power over them, um, so they have their own constitution, government, and they also enact their local laws. However, the UK Parliament does in fact have uh, absolute power over them as per um, what is called the direct rule. So parallels have been drawn to the 2009 decision where the UK government imposed a direct rule on the Turks and Caicos Islands after allegations of mysterious corruption. However, this was only temporary as home rule was quickly restored in the islands after the November 2012 elections. So currently in the UK, there is an active discussion surrounding the possibility of imposing the direct rule on all dependent and overseas territories. If this goes ahead, reporting of full beneficial ownership and all information held by the registrar will have to be supplied within the next two to three years, as per the automatic exchange of information agreement that the UK is subject to. So subsequently, the use of overseas countries will become much less popular for tax planning purposes and will be used mainly for asset ownership, the conclusion of shareholder agreements, and so on. Um, okay, so how can we move forward? Um, foreign companies are still needed. Um, business has not stopped overseas. However, the use of offshore companies may potentially be no longer acceptable on a moral level. Um, so there are many whitelisted jurisdictions with low tax rates and favourable tax planning laws. The traditional jurisdictions include um, Singapore, Hong Kong, Latvia and Cyprus, just to name a few. So uh, even after the leak, uh, this is showing how uh, business um, has not stopped um, even after the impact of various smaller leaks from previous years surrounding different organizations and states in the offshore world um, still it's developing at a rapid pace so this slide presents statistics for Sack Fonseca's registration and deactivation um, so this is um, striking off from the registrar or liquidation um, so this is showing yeah, both of these actions of offshore companies from um, 2009. The number of newly registered offshore companies looks to have greatly decreased. However, it by no means has stopped completely. Um, this proves once again that the Panama Papers scandal is only a consequence of systematic work for the offshoreization that will present a new incentive for jurisdictions to deal with offshore companies. So how to proceed in offshore world? Um, the important um, point here is obviously the disclosure of information. 
Um, the leak will perhaps make businesses reconsider their security, um, as even the most secure systems contain points of weakness. Everyone, um, whether it's service providers and business owners, can look to reconsider its security of information policy. Of course, uh, the concept of banking secrecy has been cancelled out and information regarding corrupt officials and criminals, of course, should be made public. However, confidential information containing trade secrets should remain intact. All you need to do is make sure that their systems um, that the systems are adequately protected against penetration of both external and internal threats. Um, internally would be for example to revise the policy of differentiation of um, employees access to such um, information so um once the leak is obvious to everyone um, that was using traditional um, offshore companies in the form of um, the use of the Seychelles, probably can no longer 100% guarantee confidentiality. Um, we live in an environment where the tax planning market is constantly changing. Um, traditional tax havens are, you know, already established, but things you know, are really rapidly developing in this area of transparency and reporting. Um, so, you know, we can see that um, traditional regulations are coming and being replaced by um, new, perhaps more modern solutions. Um, so modern businesses, obviously, um, you should be more than willing to pay taxes. How can... Um, how can one proceed really to make savings on their business by legitimate means? Um, we've already talked earlier about the difference in terms of tax avoidance and tax evasion. Uh, so there are many perfectly legitimate ways to minimize the tax burden, including um, the right to full legal tax evasion, um, which obviously, you know, this is uh, within the law. Um, to give one example, of Hong Kong and Singapore, in these countries, um, they have set up so-called so um, territorial principle of taxation, and this aims to support um, small businesses and startups by applying tax only on revenue derived from that territory of Hong Kong and Singapore, respectively. And at the same time, if your activity is not connected with Hong Kong and Singapore, so for instance, you have um, another company incorporated in Cyprus, then the tax liabilities in these countries do not occur in accordance with the applicable legislation. So, of course, this is not the only example of a legitimate reduction of tax liability. It's only then that lies... Um, on you know the surface so in the world there are a great number of laws on tax regulations and more subordinate legislation in which um, prescribed different incentives for smaller businesses paying tax so there are a number of double taxation treaties that can also assist you um, this you know it doesn't have to be done alone uh, El Tomo corporate services can um, develop a legitimate solution for you as well. Uh, so we are a reliable provider of corporate services. However, we also offer services in the field of IT. Um, we're mindful of data supplied to clients and offer a sound and secure service for businesses in a variety of fields. Um, we can also assist you in creating a remote server, setting up all necessary allocation of user power to access um, only information they need to give the most advanced software for the protection of information, as well as for everyday business life. Um, so for more information, you can follow the link on the slide there. And uh, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you so much for everyone that joined us today. Um, please leave your questions in the side. I will, of course, reply to you um, via email. 
uh, hope that you found it useful and provided some extra insight into um, Panama Papers scandal. Um, if you have any further questions, you can use the email address on screen, info at eltoma-global.com, and of course, we would be happy to assist. Thank you.